Support for this show, Politics and Right, comes from politicsandright.com, publishers of How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. It's worth it, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, and other books written by Egberto Willis. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-L-I. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. That is Good morning, Harris County. Good morning to the great state of Texas under duress from Paxton and all those starting to raid people to control the election uh, you know, fraudulently, of course. Good morning to Northeast Texas, Southeast Texas, Northwest Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana, and every nook and cranny receiving our 100,000 watt transmitters signal into those little boxes known as radios. Good morning to the entire world receiving our message via the magic of the internet, formerly known as ARPANET, created by whom? Created by you, created by your intellect, created by your tax dollars, created by everything we as a collective people of the United States and elsewhere have created, not the billionaires who control it, you know, this morning, as I, I woke up at four this morning because I wanted to do my spinning before I got onto the air and I'm watching the news and I'm watching them say, well, the tech stocks in America are under duress right now because NVIDIA didn't, wasn't as great as it should be. The tech stocks in, in Russia, the tech stocks in China, the tech stocks in in uh, Taiwan, the tech stocks. And I started to think, wait a minute, they're making the point I've always been telling you. Capitalism has nothing to do with democracy. Capitalism has nothing to do with freedom. Free enterprise does. We're going to talk about that. I don't know if we'll get to it today, but and my blood boiled, as I'm saying, they have continued to snow our people of the United States into thinking that we have to maintain an economic system that solely takes and takes and takes and takes that transfers all our monies from the lower end to the top end. But before I get into all of this, what am I talking about? We need to get to the studio with the geniuses, the guys who make it happen. One of the folks that are two of the folks that are really doing what it takes. Buenos dias, mis hermanos favoritos. Good morning, man. Oh. How are you guys doing? Oh, those miserable rats. I'll tell you. You know what? I Talk use a lot of NVIDIA parts in my yeah. computers. Yeah. You can look at any computer I have built in the past five years, and it's NVIDIA display cards. Yes. If they're not built onto the board, then they're add-in cards. So my hobby is building computers and has been for the last 30 years. I started building those things in the mid-90s. I'll say that they're a lot easier to put together today than they were before. Yes. It took days to make those things act properly if you wanted anything more than a mouse. And I always wanted multimedia on mine. So anyway, uh, good morning, Egberto. It's another fine day here at the radio. The 10 cans and string have held together. So we were able to bring you a broadcast not only over FM radio which by the way i have a big fm radio it's oh. Not a small oh yeah it's a uh, sansui quad 6500 you're rebuilt. aging yourself you're aging yourself my brother and every time somebody comes into my office and looks at that stereo and goes holy cow i said yeah you can blow this you can blow this building down with this thing so my my going into my big radio and the internet also we are streaming all over the world and good morning perth australia why the I heck not? That. 
Why the heck not? Why Jack, heck you got not? you got a full page of wisdom over there, man. You've been uh, you've been thinking today. I got I got inspired. I guess I read uh, Egberto's post this morning. So okay. How are you doing, Egberto? I am doing fine. You know, I'm always delighted to hear your word with the expectation that you always go ahead and change what the hell I'm going to say. So let's hear what you got to say, my brother. Well, well, the world has lots of opinions. All right. Project 2025 is the death knell for American democracy. More tax breaks for the wealthy, higher taxes for the middle class means the middle class is subsidizing the wealthy almost directly. Citizens, are you going to sit there and put up with this? Or are you going to stand up and realize you have the power of the purse? Imagine citizen patriots going into the office at work and changing their withholdings to zero and nine. Imagine citizen patriots canceling their insurance premiums, cable bills, and take or not taking out loans for major purchases. If we quit paying the corporations and institutions that are enslaving us, we win. The people win. Are you willing to sacrifice your security to live or live with this tyranny? Okay, well, I'm going to quit right now. I'm going to stop, <laughs> and then I'm going to end up in debtor's prison. Well, well that, yeah. maybe that Project 2025 is going to bring up his debtor's prison. Well, probably so. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't put that in there already. Okay, your that credit is- card is was too high, you go to jail for 90 days. Well, you, you know, I, I tell you, they, they entice you to spend, entice you to spend, and then when you spend, you're in trouble. Anyway, Jack, I, I love that. I want to add to that, but you know who's in the house today? Today is yeah. Thursday, which means it's Neil. Aquino's. It's Aquino's day. So before I kind of comment on your commentary that's going to make me comment on that commentary. I want to bring brother <laughs> Neil Aquino into the house. El Señor Aquino, ¿cómo estás? How are you doing, my brother? Oh, oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, studio. Good morning. And 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 really briefly talking about the tech bros and the internet, uh, I, I encourage the listeners, go read about the arrest of uh, Pavel Durov, uh, the Telegram founder in France, and read about Peter Thiel and Elon Musk and their control over J.D. Vance and and what these tech bros want for you. And uh, it's Project 2025 with a healthy dose of eugenics and uh, and awfulness. But uh, it's 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 something but good. Good morning, world on that on that dystopian note. They're like James Bond villains uh, brought to life. Absolutely. So we got to take folks. Look, Look, um, the Project 2025 is real. What uh, what a lot of our MAGA folks are doing is real. I think that's grammatically correct. Is real. Look, uh, today, Aquino is going to speak. Neil Aquino is going to speak about what Paxton did right here in Texas. And this is just the beginning. So I am going to lay the floor on to Brother Aquino. because, And I want you guys... Not only here in Texas to listen to this, those of you around the country, listen to it. Those of you around the world in democracies, this is what we're talking about. Uh, Thankfully, uh, in France, they bit the bullet and they prevented it from happening in the second round. No, you guys dodged the bullet in France. Are we going to dodge the bullet here in America? I hope so. France did it. Even after we thought the right had gotten it, but we brought it back. Neil. Right. Although Macron is resisting a left coalition led um, um, prime ministership and parliamentary majority over there. He met with John Marie Le, uh, Le Pen uh, a few days ago and we'll have we'll have to see what 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 they get. But they did. They did dodge a bullet. Yeah. Um, OK, there were uh, those are my global updates for the day. And um, so <laughs> We'll bring it back local today. Today's kind of a Texas story. Usually, we're talking about Houston and Harris County, and um, as Egberto said, it has gotten national attention. The upshot is Ken Paxton used uh, police to do some raids, and in some ways, you know the story already because uh, it's Ken Paxton. So you know that it was wrongful, shameful, false pretenses, and and maybe something to do with suppressing the vote. And all those things are true. To give it some context. Um, there were raids, and, and these were focused in the kind of Uvalde area, dealing with figures also from San Antonio and, and Bear County. And these people whom were raided by the police, including an 87-year-old woman whom 
um, by all measures, seems to be just an active rank and file Democrat. These raids were focused on voter registration efforts by these people. And these people were engaged in registering to vote older Texans in a hotly contested area. So one of the people whom uh, was raided, um, Cecilia Castellano, is the Democratic nominee for a Texas state House seat currently held by a Democrat. That Democrat is uh, leaving office. And according to the Texas Tribune, at least, this is the most um, hotly, this is the number one Republican focus, this seat, to gain a Democratic seat in the upcoming election. This is this is target number one. So Ken Paxton has done raids and has raided this candidate in this hotly contested legislative seat. Let, let me time out a second. I don't, I don't yeah. want to interrupt your, your, your trend of thought. But I want people to recognize what you just said. Right. And I want to make sure that I'm getting it right, because that's what I read as well. The candidate, the actual candidate was right. raided and their cell phone taken away to, and, you know, again, to spy on the candidate's cell phone was taken by the state of Texas. Right, right. So there are two big things in what I said. There are two big things. So. Two big things. So the rank and file woman, 87, and they made her, you know, they raided her. This was like, according to accounts, this was like a raid you see on TV. These, uh, they gun toting, uh, 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 overwhelming force, and they went through all her stuff. So this is a rank and file woman um, just doing what, to her mind, criminal, they're criminalizing normal political activity. So you are a potential risk. Um, doing normal political activity. And then the importance, and it was also a gentleman um, who was part of the raids, who was a former Democratic Party chair in Bear County, which is San Antonio. So to me, it was important uh, in, an, in an odd, in an unfortunate way beneficial that two members of the higher political class got these violent raids too. So if you're a state representative, if you're an elected official listening, and I'm certain they listen each, each morning to this program is um, you are not immune. You are not immune. Because one of the themes that we've had with the, uh, my Houston Democracy Project and, and that I talk about on social media is these electeds need to invest themselves fully in the fight. And because they're held, they're insulated by low turnout, they're insulated by special interest money. And I'm talking about Democrats here. Um, they think, you know, maybe they can weather the storm for two or four or six years. So the two headlines of what I've said so far, uh, well, a headline is that they rated these people. And you're not immune. You're not immune. If you're an elected official, if you're a well-connected political person, and then also, if you're doing just rank and file political activity, you're not immune either. So these raids were conducted, and the, 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 the media keeps using the term, and there have been good media stories on this, but they keep using the term vote harvesting. Which sounds that makes to me think like of or, organ harvesting. You know, it's it's this insidious term. Vote, what are they doing? Vote harvesting, and so people, uh, candidates from both political parties, both political parties, will interact with senior citizens. And the stories are not or the stories are never clear. And there's a reason the stories are not clear because the laws are made to be nebulous, and the laws are made to be selectively enforced. And the laws are there to make you nervous about doing normal registering the vote activities. So both parties will go into a senior living facility, uh, a, a bingo hall, a church, wherever there might be um, older folks uh, potentially there. And they will help them. There's there's mail ballots. There's telling them you want to vote Republican. There's telling them you want to vote for so you want to be certain to vote for so and so in this specific race. And these practices are, and so it's important to me, it's really important to remember that these older folks have agency because the, the picture they want to paint is that there's these older folks in, in some, whatever state of cognitive awareness and these shifty operators paid by whatever nebulous force are, are, are duping these people. But these are people all their lives have voted Republican, all their lives have voted Democratic. Maybe there's a politician who's been on the ballot for 20 years. They've always voted for this person. They know what they're doing. You could, you, they're not, you know, it's not a Mr. Spock mind meld. They're not, they're not making these people do something that they don't want to do. But there was a line in a Texas Tribune uh, article, and I've lost the line, but it was a professor from 
Texas Rio Grande University, a, vote, a voting expert, and he said that it's really difficult. He, he, I'm paraphrasing, but just gently, it's difficult to know what's legal and what's not. It's difficult. And then this also sets up, this also sets up after the election, the, con, uh, the ability to overturn the pretense, not that they need a pretense. And that's also important to remember. We keep saying we've got to win by a lot so they can't overturn it. You know, no, we could still win by a lot and they still might try to overturn it because we're trying to win elections and they're trying to take power. So let me let me just summarize it with um, from my blog post on the Houston Democracy Project, a series of quick points. Um, One, the one I already said, Democratic elected officials are not immune from Republican violence. Two, we're at a place where normal political volunteer efforts can be criminalized. And you have people who are scared to register voters. Um, And some of the stories have talked about canvassing efforts and, you know, um, people being followed or watched while canvassing. Three, the use of uh, DPS police to conduct the raids should remind people that every additional police officer in Texas is another potential participant in Republican attacks on democracy and also the mass roundups of migrants openly planned by the right. And so there, there are reasons people do want, I'm not here to tell you that you need more or fewer police, but you need to be cognizant of what these police have the capability to do. Look how easy it was for Ken Paxton to turn the police into someone raiding people for normal political activity. Four, Republicans are afraid of Democratic gains at the ballot box. Two polls, recent polls, including the Houston Hobby Government School poll here in town, have Colin Alred within two percentage points of Ted Cruz in the U.S. Senate race. Colin Alred, the Democratic nominee, a congressman from the Dallas area. Five, Republicans in Texas will not accept statewide defeats and other defeats as well without resorting to every tactic possible to stop and overturn these defeats. Six, and this is a constant theme I have, and I've mentioned it here before, with violent raids taking place and Democratic victories increasingly possible, across Texas, what excuse do Harris County Democrats have to not be involved in every way possible? So Rodney Ellis, with your $5 million in the, in the, in the campaign bank, what's your GOTV plan? Mayor Turner, you know, you like to tweet about every, you know, everyone you meet and it's somebody's birthday. You're in this safe seat. Where's your GOTV plan? Carol Alvarado, Senator, you have a million dollars in your campaign bank. Mayor Whitmire, you're a terrible Democrat. You're a lousy Democrat, but you keep saying you're a Democrat and you've endorsed Harris. Where, where, where are you? And all of them, all of our, remember most of our state representatives, all of our state representatives actually in, in, in Harris County are in safe gerrymandered seats. Symphonia Thompson, John Rosenthal, Ann Johnson, Armando Wally, and some are active and some are not. And the line I just used lastly, Democrats are running to win elections. Republicans are looking to hold and take take and hold power. So these raids are a big deal, and it shows you that no one's safe, shows you that there's nothing they won't do. And this was in the San Antonio Uvalde area. It was all focused on Latino. Um, that's been another focus. The, these were all focused on Latino uh, people, uh, but there's no reason it couldn't be here in Harris County. There's no reason it couldn't be focused on Black voters, there's no reason it couldn't be focused on Asian voters. There's no reason it couldn't be focused on a um, white Democratic area. And it's it's really important we be aware of of of, of this and uh, and 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 not take it, not take it, not accept it. Look, uh, that is some that's great information, uh, Neil Aquina. So, folks, we have to keep our v- democracy. We have to take our democracy. We can't allow it to be. We cannot cede it to criminals like. Ken Paxton and right. the uh, and what MAGA is attempting to do, they're they're trying to do what they do very well. People don't like their policies, so they suppress those who they know won't vote for their policies. Unfortunately, their policies hurt their own because their policies are really only for the top of the of the game. Anyway, welcome aboard, Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain, in the chat. We also have Eric Hayes from uh, Atascacita Kingwood, as well as Lizard Queen. I think Lizard Queen is in Houston proper, correct, Lizard Queen? I think Houston proper. Anyway, uh, folks, uh, let, let's continue here with the program. Telephone number 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738, extension 2. To get on air. Una vez más, le repetir 713-857-3838. 713-857-3838. 
Extensión número dos para hablar. Give us a call and let us uh, hear what you have to say. The second subject of the day is about Project 2025, and this sort of builds upon what we heard from Brother Jack as he started the program. Of course, Brother Jack has a tendency of changing the direction of the program, just like every one of you on the outside who are calling in, because Politics Done Right belongs to whom again? Let me think, let me think, let me think. It's your show. I may write the darn thing and put it on the newsletter, but if you call in and change a show or change a subject, baby, it's your program. Anyway, the second topic, Billy Allison Irwin is in the house. Good morning, Billy Allison Irwin. Uh, she's right here in the chat as well. Hey, guys, look, Project 2025 is one of those stealth kind of things, right? We want when we do you harm and you complain, we want to be able to say, but you've we're doing what you voted for. So they put Project 2025 out there, all 900 and change pages out there, because they know that most of us don't read. Hell, I haven't read the entire Project 2025. I go to sites that that read it and put it in, 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 a, in a short form. I don't do it not because I don't want to, just don't have the time to read 920 pages when I'm doing four or five blogs a day and having to do research for those blogs. But they know if, if this is all I do, and I don't read the entire 925 or 930 or however many pages it is, they know Americans aren't going to do it. So the, the idea is here, is, here is Project 2025. When it starts harming you or you don't like it and you start complaining to these politicians, they're going to say, but you voted for it. We told you we were going to do this. But you know what? They don't have to tell you they're going to do this. They've already started. They started with the Supreme Court with the local district courts, with the regional courts. They did it already. And now they're starting to make use of what they did and extend it and move it on. We have Bard on line number one. Come on in, Bard, and then I'll continue with Project 25, so 2025 afterwards. Bard, how are you doing, my dear brother? Come on in. Doing well. Good morning, sir. I just wanted to ask you, you kind of cut me off yesterday. I wanted to ask you a question. Do you support the border wall? Do I support the border wall? I don't particularly No. Let, let me just put it this way. Let, and, and, but I need to qualify my no. Okay? No, I don't support the border wall for one particular reason. The border wall, let's say we were to put a border wall from California till the bottom of Brownsville where where the Mexican border ends, right? Uh, the funny thing about it is there are many more ways to get in the country than through the border wall. In a in a in a in a time when we have technology, there is no reason to invest money in a physical wall. When what you're doing is you're blocking animals, water flow, and all these other things. It's, it's an arcane, backward thinking method. Now, unfortunately, Kamala Harris, right, has been taking pictures as she's showing that she's going to be strong with the border, with showing herself with uh, border walls as well. Let me qualify this a bit. Uh, notice what I always say. You have to go where the people are. Between the, the 90 days that she has to get elected, the 90 days that she had to get elected, is she going to be able to educate folks as this, towards the stupidity of the border wall? Or is she going to have to say, well, this is where people are. I am not going to fight it right now. As I become president, I'll educate the population and let them know there we have thousands of line uh, uh, thousands of miles of shoreline we have thousands of entry points that have nothing to do with that border in mexico so why invest billions of dollars there when we could have it elsewhere your response bard so you're going against your candidate kamala you, she wants the border wall no i am going i, I and let, let me just say i think her wanting the border wall is simply uh, the, the bad word would be saying disingenuous. The good word would be saying meeting the people where they are, because in, that's what people have been taught to believe was effective. So my answer, again, answers, ha smart answers are generally 
nuanced. And the nuance is she has an election to win. And to win the election, you have to make people comfortable. Go ahead. So wouldn't the border wall force immigrants to do it legally, right? They would have to come through a port of entry. No, that is foolish. That is, that doesn't say that at all. A border wall just says that the places where the border wall is, people aren't going to come in there. They'll come in elsewhere. Because, again, you do, we don't police over 5,000 miles. Of, we don't police it hundreds of thousands. Well, if you, come, if you look at our shoreline, if you look at our border with Canada, we don't police most of it. And most of those are entry points. Again, what I'm saying is we have some of the most, and I'll, I don't like to use the word, but it is, it is a propos. We have some of the most stupid policies when it comes to immigration. If you think most people come through the border, you're dreaming. Most people come through Canada. Most people come through the shorelines. Most people come through the airlines. That's how most people get here that are here in an undocumented fashion. And most of the undocumented as well don't look, or I shouldn't say most, a lot of the undocumented folks don't look like those crossing the border. But you'll never know because what we do is we don't have a true immigration policy. We have a race policy. Continue, my brother. Well, I love I love you in this, in this double talk. But I, whoa, whoa, whoa. hold on. No, no, stop, stop, stop. Uh, let's not lie to our audience. How did I double talk? You talked around how you're you're uh, you're not for the wall. And no, I'm not. The, there's there's very few immigrants coming over the southern border, which is totally false. That's not what I, I said. There are many other places that uh, that our undocumented come from. And most of these undocumented come from the Canadian border. The uh, uh, through the airlines and if you uh, if the aggregate of all the other forms on vacation visas, the aggregate of how all immigrants get here. In fact, I know several of my undocumented friends. They came here legally. They just stayed. Have you heard of what's going on in Aurora, Colorado? Uh, I'm sure you'll tell me. No, you, you haven't heard about it. No, no. I, I'm asking you to tell me, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, there's there's a, a Venezuelan. Uh, high Venezuelan population. Okay, I, I guess. I we wish someone would it. clarify. I wish the right would clarify with Venezuela because we were. Um, yeah. That's just been interesting to me because we were. The right has been over and over. Uh, Hugo Chavez and Maduro, and um, we were told. We were told. I think with some accuracy that that's that's not where you want to live. So we welcome the Cubans because they're fleeing a tyrannical government. Um, I don't have a good opinion of, of the Venezuelan government, but a lot of those folks have come here. Some of the border crossings mentioned those folks. And it used to be that the Republicans embraced uh, Venezuelans because they were coming from Chavez and Maduro. But now we keep uh, we, we lump them in with with everything else. The Republican flip on Venezuela has been interesting to me because it seems similar to Cuba in some ways. Um, but I guess it's I guess it's more convenient to demonize them than to say that maybe they're maybe they're leaving for a good reason. Yeah, I mean, it, the, 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 don't ask MAGA policy or Republican leadership policy to be consistent. You will never find a consistency there uh, because it is not based on honesty. It is based on how do we best maintain power. Let's go ahead and get somebody new here in. Let's go ahead and go to Champ. And then Greg, come on in, champ. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I just sir. have one thing to say. Yes. I just have one thing to say. Israel had a border wall. How much good did it do them? You know, you're such a smart person. I mean, like, you know, champ, it doesn't, if you want to be honest, champ, it doesn't require a lot of thought to realize that that is the, that walls and those things are the past. China's great wall. I mean, it is such an, uh, it is such a silly thing it's it, the, the people that make money are the contractors who get kicked that who give the politicians kick back to build these things that don't work so you make a wall that the foundation goes about six six to ten feet deep and you know what you tunnel 12 feet and you come into the country if you want to go through that avenue it makes no sense but again we don't push smartness. Champ, come on in. Let me continue with Greg after you're done. Anything else, Champ? No, that's all. You have a great day. You too, my brother. Thank you for having such a smart commentary. Let's go to Greg. Come on in, Greg. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay, good. Um, yeah, the talk about immigrant immigration is really interesting. 
So one thing we have to do is we have to definitely clarify what the de definition is. An immigrant is somebody from another country. So even our wonderful host here, who was born in another country and is now an American citizen, is still considered an immigrant. He's just a, you're, you're just a naturalized immigrant like my wife. Yes. Okay. And my wife, she came here, a lot of immigrants come here with visas. And because there's quite a bit of opportunity here, what happens is a lot of them want to stay over and um, make money and so forth like that. And my wife stayed over. She was an illegal or let's say undocumented immigrant for a number of years before she met me. Mm -hmm. uh, 17, well, 19 years ago. We got married 17 years ago. Um, and she became a legal citizen. When I met her, she was hardworking. <laughs> she paid her taxes. She, uh, she was a, a collector. She collected uh, debts for some company and so forth like that. She did, you know, kind of some of the hard jobs that uh, other uh, immigrants tend to do, but not physically hard. Um, another thing is, yeah. So, so many immigrants don't get don't come. They definitely don't come to the southern wall. Like you said, they come airplanes different ways, and they come with visas and stuff. And they and they overstay. And I don't know why we're afraid of immigrants, anyways, because they're one of the best things for any country. I lived in Japan, and there's so many immigrants there because they don't have, they're just not having children. There, there's a shortage of, of labor over there. And the same thing here. Um, immigrants are an incredibly positive effect on our, on our country. And if you look at all the cities that have larger number of immigrants than cities without, they tend to have lower crime rates. So immigrants are less likely to commit crimes than American citizens. It's not that you they know, don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Greg, go ahead, no, go ahead uh, uh, Neil. Neil was going to say something. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because um, – I, that, that you do see that statistic, and I believe it. You know um, that immigrants uh, today are less likely to commit crimes. You know, my on my mom's side, we've overstayed for four hundred years um, because on my mom's <laughs> side that year in the 1630s. I'm I'm a bit of a of a, of a blue blood um, on my mom's side. We we got here, but really back in John Winthrop times, not not long after the Mayflower. And I mean, without knowing, you can't exactly know the story, but we we surely displaced. Um, Native American, of course, we had displaced them with smallpox uh, before we got here. And um, I remember reading a book, it was called New England Bound a few years ago. It made some news at the time. And it talked about how even relatively average New Englanders in 17th century uh, Massachusetts kept slaves, um, um, one or two slaves. It was common. So it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I, um, um, I don't even know where this point goes, except to say that I reap the benefits of being here for 400 years. They, these folks, my my relatives, my ancestors just showed up, spread disease, uh, uh, displaced people, um, quite potentially held slaves. You know, and these, these were the these were the Moors of the time. Um, and I've reaped those benefits, and 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 here we are. Neil, I, I get. I mean, I, you never quite told me that, and you and I have been friends for for a long, yeah. long time. But you know what is so interesting, Greg? I'm gonna come back to you in a second. But what's I'm, I'm actually a direct descendant of a um, of a speaker of the House, Theodore um, Theodore Sedgwick, um, was the third or fourth. He was the first or second United States senator from Massachusetts, and the third. Or, and he had a niece who was a prominent uh, novelist. Was the now, you, now uh, you're uh, bragging. Said, now, hey, 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 hey. Now you're bragging about you being the... Yeah, no, but, but <laughs> Let me just get... showed, we just showed up and... I, and you took know, the stuff. You just took it. We just you showed know? up and, and took it. And I've been reaping yeah. those benefits for 400 years. Let me go to Greg again, see if Greg wants to add something before I move on. Hey, Greg, what else you got to say? I, I think that's probably good. But um, yeah, my descendants go way back to the 1600s, early 1600s, too. And so yeah. I'm guilty. My family's guilty also. You know, I went to the Midwest. You know, I don't even want to look at it that way. What I what I want to say is the righteous indignation of all these people because of these people coming across the border. I find it very. I I find it. I don't even know what the word is, but it it, it it's sad because the people who came here and that came here not just to get a piece of land, but to conquer to invoke genocide on the population and all of that. Sure. They are so concerned about all these people that are just coming here to do what? Get a job, to work. And they're you know, not trying to, we, we go ahead. These people, Trump, Trump, we always want to say that they're bringing, over the years, they're bringing Ebola, they're bringing COVID and all that. Go back, go back and read. One of the reasons that, that we were able to come to 17th uh, century New England and Massachusetts is that we had transmitted smallpox just from fisher people, just from 
um, um, before even the Mayflower, occasional um, landings on, on the New England coast spread small. We had depopulated the area even before we got here. You know, and we and I'm not I don't even think about it in terms of guilt. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the history. It's important to be aware of yeah. the history. And, you know, but, you know, we, we need to be mindful of what the original um, American story was. Yeah. yeah but I, Neil, it's not and Neil and Greg are like it's not about guilt. Right. You, right, know, you can't that. solve anything that way. It's about right. knowing history and with no exactly history. Yep. When you know history, it, it makes you have something called grace. All yes. human beings, grace, because right. you can't solve how you were reared or where you came from. That's the reason I take the attitudes that I take. I'm not trying to blame anybody for anything. I'm saying let's be cognizant of what we need to do now and past history should humble us too much. Uh, Greg, exactly give me a closer. Right. right. Yeah. Give me a closer, okay. Greg. Speaking, speaking of history, um, anyone of German descent might not have been here if uh, – Oh, gosh, right. It's the famous person in history. Um, um, uh, Benjamin Franklin. So yeah. Benjamin Franklin, uh, in, in, uh, I can't remember the name of the letter he wrote, but in a letter that he wrote, he was complaining complaining about how Germans were ruining the country back mm. in 1770, I mean, excuse me, 1720, before the revolution. And of course, 50 some years later, guess what? The German, you know, the children of those Germans that he was complaining about were fighting in the revolution. There you go. But if, 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 if anti-immigrant people would have had their right back in the 1720s, we wouldn't have many German descendants who were coming here to make a, a living and stuff like that. Thank you very much, so, Greg. Great. Way, way back. Thank you, Greg. You've added, you've, you've added to the show, my brother. Thank you so yeah, kindly. Thank you. All right, let's go to Augie. Augie, how you doing, my brother? Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about what Bart said. That's what I called about the wall. Like somebody said, the the Great Wall of China sure didn't stop those people from coming in. And the Berlin <laughs> Wall sure didn't stop it. Berlin Wall, they had barbed wire, mines, machine guns, and German Shepherd dogs. That sure didn't stop them from leaving East Berlin to West Berlin. In fact, when the wall came down, the security guards went, jumped over the wall too, the machine guns. <laughs> And the West Berliners had to tell them, hey, well, you got to drop your machine guns, but come on over. Yep. And history has shown us that uh, history has shown us that people forget their own history and uh, they ignore it. And, and you that's know, what Augie, it's so important for us to realize something, right? Most of this uh, fear mongering with the immigrants and all of that, it's the biggest grift. What it is, is uh, all the, uh, you know, uh, all of Abbott's people made a lot of money. Uh, the, the transportation companies made a lot of money flying and uh, flying their people to these blue cities. But the, the real thing was making money for uh, their friends. Uh, when it come to busing, it was making money for their friends. Let's realize that we have been, they have used your anger for an anger that's displaced. If you want to be angry, you shouldn't be angry at what's happening at the border with the immigrants, etc. You should be angry at your governor who is ripping you off and, and, and giving his friends money to bust these people out of the area. To, and, and what Trump is going to want to do under Project 25, 2025 to create encampments that you are going to pay for that take that from working people, from people who are paying taxes that they will never get to take advantage of. But now you are going to pay taxes to lock them up in encampments. I mean, it's a grift. It's the take. And those even. encampments, those encampments are the precursor to um, the mass migrant ro roundups they want to do. It's important, you know, when 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 they built that they built that big camp down in Eagle Pass. And we haven't heard yeah, about it as well. much, but they intend to do mass migrant roundups, and 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 that that'll come with a big civil liberties cost. That that it's a big deal. It's amazing. It's a ripoff. But uh, Augie, at my fault. Every line is taken now, so we're going to have to go through these lines rather quickly. So, right. Augie, uh, anything else, my brother? Augie? Is yeah. Augie still there? All right. Look like we dropped Augie. Let's go to Joni. Come on in, Joni. Good morning, Egberto. Good morning, Just a my couple dear. Quick points. Uh, so, um, I, there was a conversation at uh, a library that my husband overheard and he told me about, which was interesting, where a man was uh, railing about uh, the immigration issue. And the librarian was staying quiet, and he finally pressed her on it. And she said, well, sir, they moved the border on them. It would be like us going to – because I think Mexico went all the way up to almost uh, – Oh, yeah. At one point. 
So, yes. so the border got moved on them. They were generationally here. It would be. Hey, Johnny, Johnny, to, Johnny, hold on a second. Johnny, I want since you brought that up, everybody go research the Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty. The Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty. Yes, the border were moved on them, and yes, as usual, we didn't follow the treaty we signed. Continue, please, Joni. Yeah, so it'd be like today going in northern Mexico and saying, excuse me, but this is ours now. Add them for it. And then now everybody that's generationally there for, you know, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years, moved down. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. it's, so it's, it's, it's ridiculous when you look at the history. But then there's also... Um, I, I vaguely recall Trump trying to get rid of or making people afraid to hire people who were immigrants when he first got in power. I'm not exactly sure about the time frame, but I remembered hearing that there was a, a shrimp shortage because they were trying to get my white brothers and sisters to come onto the shrimp boats and um, and work. And it was grueling. It was stinky. It was hard, hard, hard. And they were screaming to go back to shore. <laughs> so, you know, and, and so we had a shortage because I couldn't find anybody to, to work it. And and I, my last point is, let's just see each other as a family, like a human family. If we do that, then we're not afraid if it starts, if people around us, we start seeing more and more diversity in the people around us. They're just a part of my family. So um, that's just love my, you girl. my um, love you, you girl. Bye love you, care. girl. I love you, girl. You nailed Bye. it. You nailed it. You nailed it. Let's go to Brother Patrick. Come on in, Brother Patrick. Trying to make it quick. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, sir. Okay. Um, uh, for Bart, um, the uh, uh, wall, I was very disappointed in, in Kamala for uh, coming out that way, but um, I think that she's trying to uh, appease uh, a very simple population. And there are very simple people amongst us. If you don't, if they don't see something solid, uh, uh, a deterrent or something, they're not happy. And I'd, a- I'd like to ask him if, if he's getting something that he wanted and he's come out saying that, that he wants a wall, why isn't he just happy about it? Uh, but that's that's not what I, I'm really concerned about. For a year, he's been on in this time slot, and I've, I've, I've heard Brian say all sorts of things, and I think that you're finally getting to a point where you're, you're handling Brian a little bit better. But one thing I'd like you to ask Brian is if he's taking a shower this morning, um, because... <laughs> Our water system is a very successful socialized system, and without <laughs> socialism, he, he would he would stink. Um, and and I, I can go on with a bunch of different socialist uh, systems. I know. Oh, and, you know, we we we're going to be talking about that going forward, Patrick. So you you nailed it, my brother. But look, I I got to get all these calls. So thank you so kindly, brother. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, let's go to Jacob. Come on in, Jacob. Brother Jacob, you're on. All right. Uh, what I want to say, uh, like one of your um, guests was saying about German, the Germans, and uh, your guest who said he's a uh, blue blood and was displayed. One of them. I want to ask because I don't look at uh, white and black because you got Europe, you know, you got the Germans, the Irish, the French, etc. Uh, and, and like the border, the Cadiz from Spain, which are European, who bought Spanish. There wasn't no Mexicans like that. It wasn't. Like what you see today, at the Native Americans, and they 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 had you know they 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 got together, and then you have in Louisiana you had the French. Everybody know about the Louisiana French uh, uh, purchase. Uh, you had the French, but from England, he said about they had slaves. And I want to know since we are the only ones who got kidnapped and brought over here, it is a, like common said, it is a nation full of immigrants. I want to know do he do he think that we deserve reparations? For the free labor uh, build in America. That's why I want. Well, well uh, I think he can answer that for himself, but I know what his answer is going to be. Go ahead, on my brother. I mean, how would you know? He, that man, that, that man, he 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 from England. His, his poor family. He's talking about. No, no, he's a, he, no, no the, our, he's a brother of ours, man. Go ahead, uh, uh, answer it, uh, Neil. So are you for reparations, Neil? Am I for reparations? Um, my my thought about reparations has always been about the political. Um, the political impossibility of it. I have been for um, all sorts of things. Like I was very much in favor of that of when we were trying to help black farmers in the South. Uh, Joe Biden was doing that. Um, affirmative action programs. I, I have I have favored over and over programs that that try to level the the, the four hundred year wrongs done. Of course, we, the first first the slaves were brought over. I think in sixteen nineteen. Um, um, so in the terms of the reparations, um, I'm, I'm entirely open to the concept. I have just, we can't even, the court wouldn't even allow helping the black farmers with direct financial aid. Um, okay. if, if you well, could why, politically why, manage why, it, why, I'm, why, I'm open to hearing about it. And ahead, that, that, 
I thought. How about this? How about this? They have gave reparations out before. So yeah. why when we who built the country for 400 years, what? what we don't get nothing for that? Oh, no. Okay. I, don't, okay. Just, I don't disagree with any of it. I, I wish we lived in a very, uh, that's, Mar- that's, that's always what Martin Luther King would say. He would say, I'm not going back to Africa. We built this country with our labor. Okay. I got to I gotta cut it. So look, I, I don't think you will find a progressive uh, uh, Jacob that isn't for reparation, a real progressive yeah. that is. Reparations is something that is due, and you are absolutely right. But the yeah. folks who were locked up in ja- in the in the things from in Japan, I mean the Japanese who were locked up. So yeah, uh, so right. I, I, I you, you're not finding an argument here, Jacob. But look, I got a lot of calls, so now I have to limit oh, everybody oh, to oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Jacob. You have a great one. Let's go to Harry. Harry, one minute. I'm sorry to hold in that now, but I'm full. Come on, in there, brother you, Harry. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Neil. Good morning. Morning, good morning, Roberto. Well, what I was just wanting to talk about is what they were talking about yesterday on NBR, and I did some reading up on it. Is what they're trying to do in Georgia. Trump was boasting about it the other day about those three um, people on the board that don't want yeah. to certify the election if Kamala Harris should win. And I know the Democrats are doing what they can with the lawsuit because it's against the law. And, um, you know, he's just trying to rig what he tried to do uh, four years ago in Georgia with Brad Raffensperger. I'm looking for 11,780 voices. So they can't be allowed to get away with that. You know, that that uh, and I know they're talking about I read up on it was talking about the Republican counties are most likely not to uh, certify and the Democratic counties will certify. And I just think it's wrong. That's just another way to suppress the vote. If, if absolutely about harry that, you nailed it and you're at 60 yeah. seconds i gotta go thank you harry you're absolutely right let's go to uh, john garcia mi hermano good morning Edward. I buenos dias really open the topic is what i observing on the both sides with the polarization is that is that maybe like the u.s was not involved in what was the political controversies in the 2020s because you had like a very functioning democracy so now it's like we are seeing a, an old movie of the extreme left going for socialism and the extreme right going for something that we call it in Spanish caudillismo. It's like the, the worship of the leader. And we have a lot of caudillos in South America in, in the 29th century and 20th century. And now the U.S. is going for the worship of the leader that is, is something obsolete. So both sides are like following obsolete ideas, and, and that's why they are, like, exacerbated, maybe artificial polarization. Thank you very much, Juan. Senor Garcia, your your statement is taken. I wish I could comment, but we're kind of running on time, and I got to go to the next call. Thank you, brother. Uh, come on in, Brian. One minute. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, the left wing is a very forgetful group of people, uh, such as Epstein and Bill Clinton. You know, Bill Clinton was impeached for lying about a uh, lying to Congress. But what did he do to a 26 year old intern? Uh, I see pictures of uh, Epstein with uh, Trump from 1994. And they said that he's buddy buddy with with Epstein. And when Trump found out who he was, he dropped him. He wouldn't allow him uh, in his on his property. But uh, again, you, you forget that what did Zuckerberg do? He was under pressure to censor information about COVID and uh, Trump. Thank you very much, Brian. Real- Brian, yeah, 60, six- second, 60 seconds are up. I got, to, I got to go, but thank you very much for your commentary. I'll answer on the back end. All right, let me let me just uh, uh, answer Brian at the back end real quickly because uh, it's short memories. Bill Clinton, none of these guys attempted to overthrow the United States government. They did uh, create a mob that killed police officers and others. When it comes to uh, the, the misinformation, it is clear. It is so clear where Brian is getting his information. But I am very thankful that he remains listening to the program because at some point, the seeds that we plant, uh, there will be a, a nugget that gets through there. Okay. Greetings from the great state of Georgia. So let's get the hard part out of the way. I am a Republican. But tonight, I stand here as an American. An American that cares more about the future of this country than the future of Donald Trump. 
My journey started to this podium years ago when I realized Donald Trump was willing to lie, cheat, and steal to try to overturn the 2020 election. I realized Trump was a direct threat to democracy, and his actions disqualified him from ever, ever, ever stepping foot into the Oval Office again. I could spend my time revving up this crowd, but I'm certain I don't have to talk anybody out of voting for Donald Trump here. So I'm going to focus my attention on the millions of Republicans and independents that are at home that are sick and tired of making excuses for Donald Trump. If Republicans are being intellectually honest with ourselves, our party is not civil or conservative. It's chaotic and crazy. And the only thing left to do is dump Trump. These days, our party acts more like a cult, a cult worshiping a felonist thug. Look, you don't have to agree with every policy position of Kamala Harris. I don't. But you do have to recognize her prosecutor mindset that understands right from wrong, good from evil. She's a steady hand and will bring leadership to the White House that Donald Trump could never do. Let me be clear to my Republican friends at home watching. If you vote for Kamala Harris in 2024, you're not a Democrat. You're a patriot. In our family, my wife, Brooke, and I are raising three boys, and we have a family motto. And it says, doing the right thing will never be the wrong thing. During 2020, during the, just the lowest of lows, when we had armed officers outside our house protecting us from other Republicans, Donald Trump had targeted us. My son came downstairs, and he handed me this coaster that I had given him years before at a father-son retreat for our church. And he said, hey, Dad, doing the right thing will never be the wrong thing. Stay strong. <laughs> to my fellow Republicans at home that want to pivot back towards policy, empathy, and tone, you know the right thing to do. Now let's have the courage to do it in November. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay, we're coming close to the end of the program. Neil, give me a uh, give me a one minute closer as far as uh, where we're at in the state of Texas with what's going on with uh, having a corrupt attorney general. Right. So, uh, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, there were uh, raids conducted on people engaged just in normal political activity. Then also a, uh, a a very viable candidate for a state legislative seat, where they're criminalizing normal political activity voter registration don't let them uh, don't let them scare you uh, that that's my message don't let them push you out of public space don't let them scare you they're corrupt as hell they're going to do anything to keep power and they also they 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 want you afraid um be encouraging to others and i'm at houstondemocracyproject.com and lastly el norte i'm going to give a book recommendation el norte the epic and forgotten story of hispanic um, North America by Kerry Gibson. I read that uh, about a year ago. It's a great book, talks about a lot of it. El Norte by Kerry Gibson. If you want a history of the border, Hispanic North America, a lot of things we've talked about, that's a winner. Thank you very much for that, my brother. Let me throw it to the studio. I'm just sitting here wondering how low the state of Texas is going to go before it hits bottom. Just about the time you think the state of Texas politics has hit bottom, a new scandal comes up. So just how low is this thing going to go before we vote those rats out of office? There's no bottom. There is no bottom. There doesn't seem to be a bottom because, you know, every time the lowest is reached, a new low happens. So people, you got to get out there. You got to vote. Vote these people out. 
and check your voter registration because you know you may be one of the ones who can't vote now. Yeah, so check your sure. voter registration. They're purging. Check your voter registration. That's right. They better not purge mine off of there because I vote all the time. I vote on votes. Harrisvotes.org, folks. Or Harrisvotes.com, I think, is where you can start looking for your voter registration. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Jack. Today. Jack, you got something? Yeah. He who sacrifices liberty for security deserves neither. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love that. I love that. I love that. Well, we are into the program. Let me first tell you, folks, thank you for all those calls. Yes, as usual, we didn't cover not even half of what I wrote for us to cover today. So it can be found at politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. Always remember, this is your show. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I love you all, my callers, my listeners, our group here, our, our, our team. Thank you so kindly. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out! Support for this show, Politics Done Right, comes from politicsunright.com, publishers of How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. It's worth it. How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, and other books written by Egberto Willis. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right. <laughs>